So Elegy was nice enough to send me one of their Saturn resin printers, so let's check it out. So this is basically a much bigger version of the Elegoo Mars, but it happens to have a 4K monochrome screen, so your prints will be way faster than a standard Mars, and its print volume is about three times as big, as you can see with its build plate. And it also pairs up with this very large resin vat that can hold over 500 milliliters at one time. And since we're on the topic of resin, they also sent some of their new plant-based resin out, so I could try it and see what I thought. And to sum it up, it basically is a biodegradable resin to cut down on plastic waste. So perfect for test prints or prototyping. But before we get into the setup and printing or anything like that, I actually had a problem with this machine when I got it. And this video is about six months late due to that. So when I first got it, everything was completely fine. I set it up for its first print and had no problems. Then I started its second print and realized that my vat was leaking. And after checking it out a little bit more, I found out that a tiny piece of the previous print was still floating around and got pushed through the vat into the screen, cracking the screen and leaking resin. All this within the first day of owning it. So, totally my mistake. So I contacted Elegoo and asked them if I could get a replacement screen, and they said yes, but they were running really low or had almost no stock of them. Seeing that this printer is actually very popular and sells out really quick, they couldn't keep stuff in stock, and there's been shortages, as you might have known. But after that long wait, I was able to finally get the screen, replace it, replace my FEP in the vat, and make this video. And as you can see from my time lapse, it's not the hardest thing in the world to do. It's just a lot of little bolts and a little time consuming. With the screen replaced, I need to re-level the build plate, so I'm just going to loosen its bolts up so it's free moving and I need to remove the vat as well. So for leveling, all you need is a piece of printer paper. Mine just happens to have a reminder on it, but you wanna place this on top of the screen and home your build plate on top of it and tighten your bolts. I'm just going to refill my vat with the plant-based resin and it will take this entire container of resin. Just make sure to shake it well before pouring. Seeing that this is a bigger printer, I wanted to print something a little bit bigger than jewelry. So I'm gonna be printing the Mandalorian and this took a little over eight hours. It's not the biggest thing that you can print on this, but it is a lot bigger than things I normally print. And it looks like it came out pretty good. But really, we're not going to be able to see any of the details or anything like that until it's washed and removed from the build plate. So you might have noticed these weird little hanger wing things that I have on my build plate. These are 3D printed and an add-on, just so you can hang your piece and let it drip dry from different angles. And I've printed these for all of my Elogu printers. It was actually pretty easy to get this resin print off, even with its large surface area. So it looks like some of my supports actually failed during printing, but it didn't affect the model. And they're also very soft. But anyways, I need to clean them off, and I'm going to be using the wash and cure system from Elegoo. And I need to add a lot more alcohol to this wash system, seeing that it won't cover the entire piece. So even with it filled up as much as it is, I'm still going to have to take this out and flip it over at some point to wash the head part of the model. So I'm just going to set this for about three minutes, and then once it's done, I'll flip it over and do the other side for the same amount of time, and it should be good. And here it is all done. This is much faster and much cleaner than doing it by hand. So if you look right here, you can see some really weird stuff going on with these supports, along with the same thing on the back, and these are really flimsy compared to the ones I'm used to. And I really do think it's just this new resin. It's just a lot softer than the other stuff. It also looks like there's some weird texture going on on the chest area. But anyways, I need to get all these supports off and cure this, so you can just break them off or you can use some clippers that came with the machine. And this is one of the more tedious things of resin 3D printing is removing all the supports. And it really depends on your settings and your resin on how hard it is to get your supports off and how cleanly they're going to be removed. Sometimes they leave a lot of material behind, sometimes they leave almost none, and other times they take material away when you break them off. And this is my first print using this resin, and I just kind of put in some generic settings, and it seems like it worked pretty good, but there can be some fine tuning to make it a little bit better, I think. So here it is with all the supports removed. I could probably clean it up a little bit more, but I'll probably do that later. Let's cure it first. I'm going to be using the Wash and Cure Systems Cure part to cure it using UV light and a turntable. So I just set the timer for about two minutes and it should be good to go after that. If it's still soft or anything, I'll leave it in for another minute. So here it is all nice and cured and no longer tacky or soft. And you could see the really crisp and clear details in this model. But it does have this weird fuzzy texture along the chest area, which is a mystery to me. And I'd have to print some more to figure that out. 
but all in all a pretty good print and it can be easily cleaned up and painted to look really nice. So here's a full plate of prints that are all different types of jewelry and different styles, just to see how the printer would do with each one. And I could have probably put them on here a little bit better and fit more, but this should work. And as you can see, the detail on a lot of these came out really crisp. But there's also some failures on some of the pieces as well. So it looks like some of the failures are just from not having supports in the right spots. And some of it looks like it's just bad layer adhesion, so I might need to up its exposure time per layer. All in all, they came out pretty nice, especially using the same settings for all of these pieces, and this being just the second print with this resin. So I need to take these off the build plate and wash any extra resin off of them, along with curing them and removing their supports so we can have a better look at them. So this Warhammer 40k ring came out really nice, but there are some weird layer issues going on on the inside of the band. It's nothing that you couldn't get rid of, but it's just something to note. And on this particular ring, it didn't have supports and it was trying to print in midair, so it made these little weird layers. This is all stuff you have to keep in mind when actually setting up your prints, and this is why it's good to do test prints before using the expensive resins for casting. With that said, check out the scroll details on this ring and even the small textures on it. So you can get amazing details out of this. And even the skull came out really nice with no lines in it whatsoever. So to sum everything up, this is a really good printer, and it gives you the flexibility to make larger pieces along with smaller stuff. So if you did want to make figurines or something like that, or other larger things, you can. Or if you wanted to print jewelry pieces for casting, you can do that as well. But like I was saying before, these are kind of hard to get right now because they are so popular they sell out almost instantly. I will make sure to put links in the description that you can go through. And this machine costs around $500 normally. If you see it for a lot more, you should probably wait until you can see it drop down to the $499, $500 price point. Unless you absolutely need it right away, then I suggest waiting for it to hit its normal MSRP. So that's about it. If you found this video to be helpful at all, leave a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment. And subscribe to my channel to be alerted when I put out new videos. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye!